Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. So this collaboration is all of the instructors from the Fluid Art Experience that is coming up in just a couple of weeks in Seattle. We are going to be showing you the pieces that we'll be raffling off at the gala dinner at the event. Now, other than getting to meet all of you and see you in person and give you big hugs, I think I was probably most excited about this part, um, making a piece for you guys to give away. And I just cannot wait to hand this to someone, hopefully you, and give you a big hug and a congratulations and send you home with a piece of my art. That just makes my heart so happy. So I am thrilled to be doing this piece. And guys, I have to tell you, I am in love. And no, it's not with a person. It is with a technique. This technique I learned from watching Mar Molly's Artistry. She calls it her Dream Cloud series. And it's using satin enamel and swiping and tilting. And it is just so incredibly fun and satisfying. Um, it gives you a chance to play with your composition when you're done. Or if you're, you're done tilting and you like it, leave it the way that it is. But it's just a very reactive technique that I found. And uh, I love my pearls. I love creating lacing. And this technique kind of gives me all of that. Um, it's a one-stop technique. So I hope you enjoy the video. Sit back, relax. Um, this is a 20 minute video, so there may be some slow parts, but um, I hope you enjoy it and I will be back here in just a bit. Okay, and I'm back. I wanted to make sure you realize that when I am swiping, I never swipe the white satin enamel first. I always pick up the other colors around it and swipe those over the satin enamel. That is how you're going to get that reaction and those pearls. If you try swiping the satin enamel over the paint, you're not gonna get any kind of reaction. So one thing uh, to definitely notice with this technique. Now here in this area, there's no satin enamel, but I'm going to swipe it anyway because I don't want any large blocks of solid color. I think the composition looks so much better when those colors are blended, so that's why I'm swiping those areas. A couple of other things I want you to notice, all of this swiping is done in real time. It's not fast, it's a very slow process, and the pearls coming up, it does take a little bit of time. Um, if you notice throughout the piece, 
how the pearls are kind of getting bigger and bigger and they're starting to show up in places that they weren't there before. It's kind of a slow process, so you've got to have some patience. Uh, they say patience is a virtue for a reason and uh, it's a good one. But if you just kind of wait and let the satin enamel do its thing, uh, those pearls will start popping up. And speaking of patience, the tilting of this piece is done in real time. I want you to see how long it takes for the paint to kind of start moving as a whole. Uh, your paint is fairly thick and you've got it all over the canvas as opposed to pouring it in the center. Um, so it does take a little bit of time for all of that paint to start moving as a whole entity. Um, so basically what I do is I take a look at the composition before I start tilting. I decide what I like, how far I want to tilt off and go to each corner. Um, and that's pretty much it. Bring my paint back to the center. It's really important to make sure you've got enough paint on your canvas in order to be able to tilt enough off to cover your edges and maintain your composition. Um, you don't wanna put too much paint on there or you're gonna have to tilt way too much off. You're gonna lose a lot of your pearls and nobody wants that to happen. So on this piece, this is a 20 by 20, I probably used about 14 to 16 ounces of paint after it was all said and done. And uh, I kind of figured that based on length times width, which is 400, and I divided by 25 because of the consistency of the paint was thicker. And I got, uh, I believe the answer was 16 ounces to that. So I don't know if I used all 16 ounces, but if I didn't, it was pretty close. There is a sweet spot to getting just the right amount of paint on the canvas. And that's something that you can uh, experiment with. This is a pretty cool piece in itself, but I am really loving playing with my palette knife. Now what you need to remember is when you're swiping over those colors, you're swiping one color over another over another. So there are multiple layers of color underneath your top layer. So if you take your palette knife and gently manipulate the paint, you're able to show those other colors uh, from underneath. They're able to pop up and you can see them. Now in some portions, I add some paint to add some color. Uh, that center portion right there is a little too much white for me. So I will work on that, um, but in other areas, like I said, I take my palette knife, I gently kind of move the top layer of paint to uncover what's underneath. And it is such a fun process, let me tell you. This is a fantastic way to let those creative juices flow, but at the same time, you're creating some added depth, some added interest, and some added movement in your piece.
Another thing I love about this technique is that it dries absolutely beautiful. The way that I left it wet, nothing changed. It dried exactly the same. I am so digging the reaction of that silver. You see those silver pearls right there? The lacing that the silver created over the Payne's Gray that turquoise created some beautiful lacing as well. There are just so many different reactions and movement and areas of interest in this piece. And that is one of the reasons that I absolutely love this technique. And uh, I hope maybe one of these days you'll try it. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video and I can't wait to see you all at the Fluid Art Experience in just a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for an absolutely stunning Dutch pour from our very own Canela up next. <laughs>